day as God's people to, uh, to have this privilege to be free and to come together to worship and to share the, the wonderful feeling of the presence of Christ and to carry forth from here into the world that, that, uh, that we share together today. Just a couple of interesting things there before we really get into the sermon about the introduction to the story. Uh, first of all, isn't it interesting that uh, Simon Peter was the last one to get to the, uh, the tomb, but the other disciple of whom must be John, because John is the one who wrote it and does not use his own name. He just says the other disciple. And he deferred to Peter, since Peter was senior, and let him go in first. I thought that was a curious little thing. But the most interesting thing of all about this is you sometimes overlook the fact that the first person to preach the gospel was Mary. The first person to say the words of, of the salvation of Christ were Mary, because she went and told the other disciples. And she was the first person recognized by Christ, as he said, Mary, to her. And that's how she recognized her. So it's just a little, little interesting things there that we sometimes overlook, but they sort of make it more human to us, more real. And the picture that you have, by the way, on the front of the bulletin is the most apt one I've ever seen as a depiction of the, uh, the tomb and the stone, because it, it was not a, a thing built actually for human beings to easily walk into, and uh, that, that is depicted beautifully as to what that, what that was. So uh, this is an Easter, uh, like, uh, well, in the history of the world, I guess many other Easter's, where uh, things that have been on our mind have not necessarily been uh, the loveliest things, but rather the, the presence of war uh, in the world. And I know that uh, a lot of us and, uh, have spent time praying about uh, the war, about peace, longing for peace in the world. And of course, that's a much larger issue than just war. Uh, peace is an issue that begins uh, in, in the small secret places of our heart and eventually winds up on the world stage as war. But its origin is much more intimate us than that. So Jesus, in his rescue mission to the world, which is a good way to look at it, because we, we had become such well nigh unto death of uh, uh, the, the fatal attraction to, to evil, and uh, which is still, of course, very much present with us, as we witness every time you pick up the paper now. So evil is not just bad people. Evil is a uh, force out there in the world that sometimes presents itself to us in ways that is startling, but I'm saying we have not really words. So where, where does that begin then? And I thought that would be the place that uh, we might uh, we might look more closely at the, at the gospel lesson today, because as Johnny read so beautifully, uh, Jesus was quoted, Peter is quoted as saying uh, <coughs> that the, the peace of Christ is is that which we seek. Of Christ uh, that we would love to have in our hearts, it seems so elusive to us. Well, I wonder, wonder why that is. So there we have the uh, intro of what we're talking about. And that is that peace is, is, of course, not something that begins writ large and uh, works in our hearts. Uh, my experience of it is that it works the other way. Uh, it starts within me and it becomes at some point expressed out there in the world. And you can say the same for, uh, for the world stage as well. You can say the, the very same thing about uh, Russia and Ukraine and all of the other places where there's tension in the world today. That started somewhere, not out there, somewhere called the human heart, I, I, I believe. And so what we can learn from that and how we can change and be a part of this search for peace, instead of just praying about it and, well, and being well intended, but secretly in our hearts thinking, what good is this going to do? And what, what good is my loving peace going to do on the world stage when you have evil afoot as it is? Well, here's the answer to that. What we can do what we can do, what we really are called to do as Christ's people, as Christ's ministers in the world, is for us to practice peace in our hearts. Uh, so that, and that means that taking, it's sort of like in the old 12-step uh, you know, program where you take a relentless inventory of your 
yourself? I don't know if you're familiar with that phrase or not. But that's, that's something important in the 12-step program that you're required to do. You take a, quote, relentless inventory of yourself. Not somebody else. Somebody else can't do this, and you can't do this for somebody else. You only do this for yourself. And what that means is that I take a really honest look at what I carry around inside me all the time. Do I carry around inside me all the time things that I'd be happy to, to present to the Lord? Or do I carry around inside of me things that, well, I'm sort of ashamed of? Or no are wrong, but I choose to do anyway. And that's the thing. That's the old ball I with the problem of it. But, you know, I, I know what to do and what not to do. The problem <coughs> is I continue to do things I shouldn't do, and I don't do the things I shouldn't do. What is wrong with me? You know, that's what Paul is saying. So we say, what is wrong with me? Well, the problem is, it's the old human problem. And that problem was put there by evil itself to, to, to dis derail us on our way in and through the kingdom of God. The thing that we can do to take action with that, this, this Easter, every Easter, but this is the one we're celebrating today, this beautiful Easter morning, and that is that we take a look inside ourselves. What sort of grudges am I carrying around for? Years ago. Well, you know, the ones you enjoy, which kind of thing that you over your head or something, you know, those. What kind of uh, hatred do I have in my heart? What kind of uh, resentments? You know, all those little things. What everybody does. It's not like you're the only person, or I'm not the only person. We all do it. But we all got to stop it as best we can. Now, you'll never be, you'll never be 100% on this, but it's the beginning. It's the way to start towards originating peace inside of us, here where the Lord dwells. And you know we are the temple, by the way. You're looking at the temple of God. I'm looking at all of you, temples of the Lord God. They're never going to rebuild the temple on the holy mountain in Israel. Jesus became the temple. You and I became the temple. We are the temple. And if we're going to be the temple of God, we've got to be mindful about what's inside it. And what's inside it, often, to the glee of Satan, the things that are problematic for our lives, the things we keep tripping over, the things we keep going wrong all the doggone time. But this thing, there are things we can do something about. And so what I would call uh, us all to this, uh, this Easter is to be mindful of the things that we have inside us that are not peaceful, I guess, is the way we can put that. If what we really want in the world is peace, of course, that's another question. But if we really want peace in the world, the question is, what am I doing to contribute to the absence of peace? In my own heart, in my own family, in my own community, in the world, what am, what am I doing for good or for real? And see, the thing about this is, it's all of us, it's not just one or two of us. We're, we're all in the same boat. We, we all have the same problem. We all have the same problem. You know what that problem is, is that we have this propensity to do that which we know we shouldn't do. <laughs> it's the darndest thing. Uh, you know, and the way it's laid out for us is to understand that uh, the will of God may be what we seek, but sometimes we get distracted along the way to find it. And uh, the, the purposes of God in the world may be what we commit ourselves to, but it's so easy to get distracted as, as we live through these days on this earth. Well, fortunately, his rescue mission has fixed it so that uh, the, the, the degree to which we are successful in participating in our own rescue doesn't matter. He's got to cover it. Jesus has got to cover it. So, but what we must do, though, is have in our hearts an openness and a willingness and a desire to do God's will. A desire to be about doing the business of God in the world. Because what you'll find if you have that desire eventually, you'll start doing it more and more. But we're not here to earn points. We're not here to prove that we are uh, something perhaps we're not. We're here to be honest with ourselves with God and accept the love of Christ in our lives. Because that, that is the road home and there isn't enough of it. So this Easter, then what we can do is be mindful of how, uh, of what we spread around. Like I said, uh, the families and the groups that we were part of, uh, in our community.
communities, all those places where we spend our time and energy. What, what is it we carry through those gatherings? Whether we express it verbally or not, what is it I carry around inside me? Because you know that, that people pick that up. You can sense when somebody's joyful or happy or sad. Can't you? Sure you can. You can tell by the, if you're looking at their face, you can tell by the demeanor, you can tell by a thousand other ways. If you're carrying around inside of you resentment and hatred, people know that. It may never be verbalized. People know that. If you're carrying around inside of you the love of God, people know that. They can tell. Have you ever just been around somebody and uh, you say, yeah, I don't know, whatever they've got, I want some of that. You know, whatever, what that joy that you just feel in them, how do you get that? Well, this is how. This is how. You house clean the other things and you allow them the rescue mission of God to take over. And the rescue mission of God is a face. It's Jesus Christ. And he's risen.